Okay, now I'm gonna do a follow-up problem to the demo that I did, and then after the demo, I have done a problem with the double uh, converging lens system. So if you remember, that one I had done a demo with one single converging lens. I had calculated the focal length of the converging lenses, and I had shown that the focal length is about 18.2 centimeters. And the way that I had calculated their focal length is that I had done N minus one, 1 over R1 minus 1 over R2. So I had used the spirometer to calculate the radius of curvature of the two ends of the lenses. And then I assumed that the radius of curvature of both ends of the lenses is, is the same. And I also assumed that the other lens has this also the same radius of curvature. So then uh, I assumed that they were crown glass, so I put N is 1.52. And then I calculated their focal length to be approximately 18.2 centimeters. Then I put uh, them 30 centimeters apart from each other, and I put a light source 30 centimeters away, and I did the experimental and the theoretical image, and the experimental Im image came out to be about 11 centimeters from the, the right side of the second lens, and when I did the theoretical uh, calculation of where the final image should be, it came out to be eight and a half centimeters, to the right of the second lens. So it's pretty, it was pretty close to the experiment and its magnification came out to be negative uh, 0.816. And its uh, final image distance came out to be uh, 8.5 centimeters, okay? So that means it was inverted image and it was 81% of the size of the original object. So now the question I want to ask is what if I immerse this double converging lens system in a liquid, and let's say the, in the first case that the liquid is water, so it has an index of refraction 1.33. So imagine this whole thing is now immersed in water. Okay, index of refraction of water is 1.33. Then I'll do another case where I'll immerse it in a liquid which has a higher index of refraction than the glass itself. Then I wanna ask, What's the magnification and the location of the final image? Then let's do the calculations and see how they all change, okay? So what changes here? Well, I'm not changing the radius of curvature of the mirrors. I'm not changing their shape. I'm just changing the medium that it's in, right? So I can take the value that we got here, one over the 18.2, then I could put here 1.52 minus one, okay? Then this will be what, 0.52. Then I can take it down here, and therefore I can have a, I can calculate what, what the one over R1 minus one over R2 ratio of the, of the lens is. So if you're given a problem like this, and they tell you that you have a certain focal length that the lenses are, but now you immerse them in the liquid, start it out this way, and they don't even have to give you the radius of curvature of the lenses. Just put 1.52 minus one, because when they're usually the, when the focal length of the lens is given, it's given assuming that the lens is in air, right? So then you're gonna say uh, this is uh, 0.52, and then cross multiply it down here. So you're gonna say one over R1 minus one over R2 is one over 18.2 times 0.52. Then you're gonna get a certain number there, okay? So then, if I immerse this in water, what's gonna change? How do the equations change? So if I immerse it in water, the object is located in uh, air, uh, sorry, the object is located in water, and the glass is, uh, is, has a different index of refraction, and the image produced by the, the lens is also gonna be produced in uh, water. So you say the index of refraction of the water divided by DO, plus the index of refraction of the water divided by di is equal to the index of refraction of the glass minus the index of refraction of the water times one over R1 minus one over R2, right? So here's what this means. The object itself is in water, so you use the index of refraction here. The image that you will produce will also be in water, so you put the index of refraction of water, then you put ng minus w, okay? The regular equation that you have, you have one over do plus one over di is n minus one, one over r1 minus one over r2. The reason we do it this way the, for the regular equation, 
the object is in air, the index of refraction of air is 1. The image is in air, the index of refraction of air is 1. And then N, we use the index of refraction of glass minus the index of refraction of the medium, which is air, you see? So this is the more general version of this equation, you see? So that's what we're doing. We're generalizing it if you are in a medium other than air, okay? But we already know that the value 1 over R1 minus 1 over R2 has this number. That value doesn't change, right? So then how can we calculate that? Well, then we just put here index of refraction of uh, water over DO is 30. Index of refraction of water, 1.33 over DI. Then we subtract them. Now let's go subtract this to 1.52 minus 1.33. And then 1 over R1, 1 over R2, we'll just use this result, 0 0.10566. Okay, now let's calculate one, uh, DI liters. Ooh, very different than when this situation was in air. When this was in air, this one formed an image like 46 centimeters away on this side, and it, that acted as a virtual object for this lens. DI is negative means that the light rays coming don't even bend that much. Uh, they go like this, right? They, they uh, don't bend too much. Why they don't bend too much? Because the index of refraction of the water is very similar to the index of refraction of the, uh, the glass. So they look like they're producing an image, 54 centimeters, something like this, right? A magnified image like this, right? Then that virtual image will act as a real object for this guy. Why? Because this guy, this other uh, lens will think that the, uh, that the original object was actually there. Okay? So then how do we do that? Well, then we need another equation like this. NW over DO plus NW over DI is equal to NG minus NW. 1 over R1 minus 1 over R2. So NW is 1.33. So what do we put for DO? So since this is 54 centimeters to the left of this lens, we add 30 to that, we get 84, right? So this virtual image acts as a real object for this other lens, right? So we add 30 to 54, 84, 0.827, then 1.33 over DI, then we say 1.52 minus 1.33, which is 0.19, okay? And then we still multiply by 0 0.10566. So we do here point, wow, so, so different. Where is that? Well, because this one is quite far away from that, even though these ones don't bend the light rays uh, enough, but since it's quite far away, the light rays will come and they will still be able to bend just a tad bit, just in time to form an image very, very far away, 302 centimeters to the right of this. So it's going to be very, very far away. It's going to be a huge magnified image, right? So the final location of the image is 302 centimeters to the right of the second converging lens. So instead of being 8.5 centimeters, is in the case of air, it's 302 centimeters away. So why is that? Well, because in air, the two glasses together were able to bend them really quickly or form a, a quick image. But in water, the two combination of lenses were not able to bend the light rays in time to form a quick image. So it formed an image very, very far away, right? Uh, and it formed a magnified image. So it became like a magnifying lens, right? So the answer is very different. So now what's the total magnification of that image? Okay. So M total is going to be negative DI over DO1, negative DI over DO2. Okay. So negative, what's DI1? DI1 was negative 54. 0.827 over DO, which was 30. So that means what? The first magnification is positive, and it's greater than 1, right? So that means this virtual image is upright, which is what I thought it, it's going to be, right? Then you're going to put negative DI. DI2 is positive, 302.52. Uh, 
DO2 is also positive, 84.827. Okay? So that means the final image is inverted. It's all the way over here, very large inverted image. Okay? So then uh, it's six and a half. So that means whatever object you see here, the light bulb, it's going to produce over here an image that is six and a half times larger than the object, an inverted light bulb image very, very far away. Of course, you're not going to be able to see it too well because you're in water, but it's going to be an inverted enlarged image that is very far away. Okay. Now let's see what will happen if you immerse both, same both lenses in a, a liquid that's very thick. Let's say that it has an index of refraction of 2.0. Okay. So what's going to happen here? It's greater than the index of refraction of uh, the glass. Okay. So imagine how now it has 2.0. So uh, we're going to still use the N of the liquid over DO plus the N of the liquid over DI equals N liquid minus, no, sorry, N, N glass minus N liquid over 1 over R1 minus 1 over R2. So now we put here the N of the liquid, 2 over DO, which was 30, plus 2 over DI. And then we're going to have N of the glass, 1.52, minus the N of the liquid, 2, okay? So, you see what's happening? Because you're immersed in a liquid that is heavier index of refraction, oh, so then this is going to be negative when you subtract the glass minus the liquid. So, you always have to do the glasses medium minus 2, right? Then you're going to do here 0 0.10566. So, then what's going to happen? So you put 2 over di, then you do the same calculation, 15 centimeters, okay? So what ended up happening, this was, this came out negative. In previously, this had come out positive, but because this number went over there, it had already come out negative, and it was negative 54, I believe, right? Now what ended up happening, because this is negative already, you subtract this from it, you get a a bigger negative and then when you invert it you get a smaller number so it actually produces a virtual image that is here smaller than itself so it's still not able to bend the light rays so what ends up happening is like this now the converging lens actually literally acts like a diverging lens right it it almost acts perfectly as if it was a diverging lens in air so the beams of light come, okay? The beams of light come, and instead of trying to bend them in, it just basically goes like this and then goes, uh, inverts out outward, right? Like this, like this. So then it forms an image right here. So the converging lens has now behaved as a diverging lens, producing a virtual image that, that is smaller than it, right? So then what's going to happen? Then I'm going to do the same thing, right? Uh, so I'm going to do 2 over 3. Um, so then the this distance from here to here is going to be what? From this lens uh, to that object. So then it's going to be 17. 17 plus 30. So that's going to be 47. So uh, N liquid is 2 over what? DO is going to be 30 plus 17, 47. And then you're going to have N liquid, 2 over DI, right? Then you're going to have 1.52 minus 2 again. And then you're going to have 0 0.10566. Okay, so look what's going to happen here. Way different. So the beams of light come. The beams of light come like this. They diverge outward. This lens thinks that they're coming from this location. And then it diverts it outward again. So it, it doesn't even tr behave as a converging lens anymore. It's diverging it outward. So then the final image is going to be where? 21 centimeters to the left of that lens, somewhere like this. You see? So you're producing two virtual images. How can you see them? You can see them by putting your eye here. When you put your eye here, you're going to see this image. If you put your eye here, 
right? If you put your head and eye here, you'll see this image, right? And if you put your head and eye here, you'll see this image here, the final image, okay? So a very different uh, result than having them in a liquid which was water, right? So then, uh, what is the total magnification? O2. Okay, so negative di is equal to negative 17 over 30. That means the first image is upright. Then let's see what's going to happen to the next one. Negative di, and then di2 is equal to negative 21. Do was equal to 47. So they're both positive. That means the final image is upright and it should be smaller than the actual object, right? So the location of the final image is 21 centimeters to the left of the second lens, and the magnification is a quarter of the size of the original light bulb size, okay? So you can see now really good examples of changing the nature of the problem by just simply placing these lenses in different mediums and then using the original 1 over R1 minus 1 over R2 result, but then just changing the index of refraction of the medium that they're located in, okay? Thank you very much.